Strategic planning is a cornerstone of success in medical affairs. It shapes how we set our priorities, allocate resources, and align our activities to meet business and scientific objectives. The strategic planning process has evolved significantly over the years, adapting to new challenges and opportunities brought about by technological advancements, changing regulatory landscapes, and a more patient-centric healthcare model. Today, we will discuss the details of the strategic planning process, highlighting how it has changed from traditional methods to modern, more agile approaches. We will also focus on the specific impacts on medical affairs, showcasing why these shifts are crucial for driving value and improving outcomes in today's complex healthcare environment. So let's get started. Let us have a look on the traditional strategic planning process. Historically, strategic planning in medical affairs was a structured, top-down process characterized by a rigid timeline and predictable outputs. It often involved an annual or biannual cycle where objectives were set and plans were developed based on past performance, existing market conditions, and internal capabilities. The focus was on long-term goals, often spanning three to five years, with detailed plans on how to achieve these targets. In the past, the strategic planning process was heavily siloed. Medical affairs would develop plans independently of other departments like commercial, R&D, or market access, leading to misaligned objectives and missed opportunities for collaboration. Strategic plans were also primarily product-focused, emphasizing the support of ongoing clinical trials regulatory submissions, and publication planning without a broader view of the market dynamics or the evolving needs of stakeholders. Moreover, traditional strategic planning lacked agility. It was a static process that did not account for the rapid changes we see today. Once the plan was set, there was little room for adaptation, even when market conditions or internal priorities shifted. This approach worked when changes in the healthcare environment were slow, but it has become increasingly inadequate in today's fast-paced world. The shift from traditional to modern strategic planning in medical affairs has been driven by three main factors. The need for continuous adaptation in a rapidly changing healthcare landscape, the increasing importance of cross-functional collaboration, and the growing reliance on data-driven decision-making. These factors have reshaped how medical affairs teams approach strategic planning, moving away from rigid annual cycles to more dynamic, flexible processes that allow for real-time adjustments. By understanding these driving forces, we can better appreciate why the planning process has evolved and how it continues to adapt to meet the demands of today's complex environment. In the following slides, we will explore each of these factors in detail and examine how they have influenced the strategic planning practices in medical affairs. First, the continuous planning and agile approaches. One of the most significant shifts in strategic planning today is the move from a static, annual cycle to a continuous and agile approach. Modern strategic planning is an ongoing process that allows medical affairs teams to regularly revisit and adjust their strategies based on new data, emerging trends, and feedback from the field. This is particularly relevant in a landscape where scientific evidence, regulatory guidelines, and stakeholder expectations are constantly evolving. Agility in planning means medical affairs can respond quickly to unexpected challenges, such as new competitor data, changes in treatment guidelines, or sudden shifts in patient preferences. Instead of waiting for the next planning cycle, adjustments can be made in real time, ensuring that the strategy remains relevant and impactful. For instance, if new real-world evidence emerges that impacts a product's value proposition, medical affairs can swiftly pivot their strategy to focus on generating and communicating new insights. Second, the cross-functional collaboration. Another key change in modern strategic planning is the emphasis on cross-functional collaboration. Unlike the siloed approaches of the past, today's planning processes actively involve input from various departments, including commercial, market access, regulatory, 
and even external stakeholders, such as patient advocacy groups and key opinion leaders. This holistic approach ensures that the strategic plan is comprehensive and considers multiple perspectives. Incorporating insights from other functions allows medical affairs to better align their strategies with broader organizational goals. For example, collaborating with commercial teams can help ensure that scientific messages are aligned with market needs, while input from market access can guide the development of evidence that supports reimbursement discussions. This cross-functional planning approach not only strengthens the overall strategy, but also fosters a culture of collaboration and shared purpose within the organization. And finally, data-driven decision-making. Today's strategic planning processes are increasingly driven by data. Medical affairs now have access to a wealth of data sources, including clinical data, real-world evidence, health economics outcomes, research, and digital analytics. These data inform strategic decisions, helping teams to identify unmet needs, measure the impact of their activities, and refine their plans accordingly. For example, medical affairs can use data analytics to track the performance of their medical education programs, assess the reach and impact of their publications, or evaluate the effectiveness of their engagement with healthcare professionals. By leveraging data, medical affairs can move from intuition-based planning to evidence-based strategies that are more likely to deliver results. Data also plays a critical role in scenario planning, allowing medical affairs to model different strategic options and assess potential outcomes under various market conditions. This helps teams to make more informed decisions and be better prepared for uncertainties. To effectively implement modern strategic planning, several frameworks can be utilized, but for this tutorial, I will focus on just few frameworks that are very applicable to medical affairs, while we have already discussed the rest of the approaches and frameworks in other sessions. The first important framework is the SWOT. SWOT remains a foundational tool in strategic planning, helping medical affairs teams to systematically evaluate internal and external factors that could impact their strategy. By identifying strengths and opportunities, teams can focus on areas where they are most likely to succeed, while weaknesses and threats highlight areas that require additional resources or risk mitigation. Then we have the OKRs, Objectives and Key Results, which we can refer to as other terminology describing the goals, metrics, and impact, which we need to discuss now in details. One, goals. Goals have moved from static targets to dynamic objectives. Traditionally, the goals of medical affairs were established during an annual planning cycle, often dictated by overarching corporate objectives that trickled down from executive leadership. These goals were typically static, such as supporting the launch of product X or increasing publication output by 20%. While these goals provided direction, they often lacked the flexibility needed to adapt to new scientific data, evolving stakeholder needs, or unexpected market changes. The shift in strategic planning has redefined how goals are set and pursued in medical affairs. Today, goals are no longer rigid targets. They are dynamic objectives that can be continuously refined based on real-time insights and feedback. For example, instead of merely aiming to increase publication output, a modern medical affairs goal might focus on generating impactful evidence that addresses specific gaps in clinical practice or real-world patient care. This shift emphasizes the quality and relevance of outputs rather than just the quantity, aligning more closely with the evolving needs of healthcare professionals, patients, and payers. Furthermore, dynamic objectives are designed to be agile, allowing medical affairs teams to pivot quickly in response to changes in the competitive landscape or new scientific discoveries. For instance, if new data emerge that significantly alter the understanding of a disease pathway, medical affairs can adjust their strategic goals to prioritize education on these new insights, ensuring that their efforts remain relevant and valuable. 
What about metrics? Metrics also moved beyond outputs to measuring true value. Metrics have always been a critical component of strategic planning, serving as the benchmarks against which success is measured. However, traditional metrics in medical affairs were often output-focused, centered on counting activities such as the number of medical education events, publications, or healthcare professional interactions. While these metrics provided a snapshot of activity levels, they fell short in capturing the true impact of medical affairs on patient care, clinical decision-making, and overall healthcare outcomes. The evolution of strategic planning has led to a significant shift in how metrics are defined and utilized. Today, the focus is on measuring true value rather than just outputs. This involves developing metrics that assess the quality, effectiveness, and impact of medical affairs activities on various stakeholders. For example, instead of simply tracking the number of presentations delivered, modern metrics might evaluate the influence of those presentations on clinical practice, such as changes in prescribing behavior or improved adherence to treatment guidelines. Impact metrics are increasingly becoming the norm, highlighting the shift from traditional activity-based measurements to more sophisticated assessments that capture the value medical affairs brings to the healthcare ecosystem. Metrics such as time to influence, the speed at which new evidence is adopted in clinical practice, stakeholder engagement quality scores, and the impact of medical affairs on patient pathways are examples of how the focus has moved toward measuring outcomes that truly matter. Data analytics and digital tools play a pivotal role in this transformation. Advanced analytics allow for more granular and insightful assessments of medical affairs activities, providing a clear picture of what is working and where adjustments are needed. This data-driven approach helps teams refine their strategies in real time, ensuring that their efforts are not just active but effective. And also, the impact of medical affairs significantly changed because medical affairs moved from support functions to strategic leaders. In the past, the impact of medical affairs was often viewed through a narrow lens. The department was primarily seen as a support function tasked with backing up commercial objectives through scientific communication, managing key opinion leader KOL relationships, and ensuring regulatory compliance. This perspective limited the perceived value of medical affairs, reducing its role to that of a reactive entity rather than a proactive strategic leader. The shift in strategic planning has redefined the impact of medical affairs, elevating it to a central role in shaping the organization's scientific and strategic direction. Today, medical affairs is recognized as a critical driver of value creation influencing everything from early clinical development decisions to post-market evidence generation and real-world data utilization. The impact is now measured not just by traditional commercial outcomes, but by the broader contribution to advancing patient care, informing clinical guidelines, and driving innovation in treatment paradigms. For example, medical affairs teams are increasingly involved in identifying unmet medical needs early in the product life cycle, influencing clinical trial design, and ensuring that study outcomes are aligned with real-world clinical questions. This proactive involvement extends to post-approval stages, where medical affairs continues to generate and disseminate evidence that supports optimal product use, informs payer decisions, and addresses ongoing clinical challenges. Moreover, Medical affairs has become a pivotal player in the shift toward patient-centric healthcare models. The impact is no longer just about supporting the business. It's about making a tangible difference in patient outcomes. This is reflected in initiatives such as patient-reported outcomes research, patient advocacy collaborations, and efforts to incorporate patient perspectives into evidence generation and dissemination strategies. So, by understanding these expanded roles, we have transformed from a support function into a strategic leader within the organization, guiding decisions that directly impact patient care and shaping the future of the therapeutic landscape. By the way,
we have a separate tutorial on the proven strategies for measuring the medical affairs impact. I will put a link for it in the description of this video. Let's also discuss quickly scenario planning and design thinking. Scenario planning allows medical affairs to prepare for various future scenarios by developing strategies for each possible outcome. This is particularly valuable in a field where changes in clinical data, regulatory environments, or competitor actions can rapidly alter the landscape. By anticipating potential disruptions, medical affairs can ensure their strategies are resilient and adaptable. While design thinking is a human-centered approach that emphasizes understanding stakeholder needs and designing solutions that meet those needs. For medical affairs, this means engaging with healthcare professionals, patients, and payers to gain insights that inform strategic planning. Design thinking encourages iterative feedback and rapid prototyping, allowing medical affairs to test and refine their strategies before full implementation. Now let's shift gears and talk about the strategic planning process. Understanding the strategic planning process in medical affairs is essential for developing and executing strategies that effectively address the needs of stakeholders, align with organizational goals, and improve patient outcomes. In this section, we will walk through the strategic planning process step by step, providing a clear framework that you can apply in your own practice. This guide is designed to help you grasp the critical stages of strategic planning, from initial assessment to execution and evaluation, ensuring that your strategies are well-informed, impactful, and adaptable to the evolving healthcare environment. The first step in the strategic planning process is conducting a thorough situation analysis. This step involves gathering and analyzing data to understand the current landscape in which your medical affairs team operates. Key components of a situation analysis include internal assessment, evaluate your team's capabilities, resources, and past performance. This involves reviewing previous strategic plans, assessing the effectiveness of past activities, and identifying areas for improvement. Internal assessments should also consider the strengths and weaknesses of your current evidence generation, scientific communication, and stakeholder engagement efforts. External assessment. Analyze external factors that could impact your strategy. This includes understanding market dynamics, competitor activities, emerging scientific data, and regulatory changes. Gathering insights from stakeholders such as healthcare professionals, patients, and payers is also crucial for identifying unmet needs and gaps in the current evidence landscape. SWOT analysis. Use the SWOT. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, framework to summarize your findings. This tool helps you visualize where your team's strengths and opportunities lie, and it highlights weaknesses and threats that need to be addressed in the planning process. The goal of the situation analysis is to develop a comprehensive understanding of both the internal and external environment, providing a solid foundation upon which to build your strategic plan. Once you have a clear picture of the current landscape, the next step is to define your strategic objectives. These are the high-level goals that will guide your medical affairs activities over the planning period. Strategic objectives should be aligned with the broader organizational goals and tailored to address the insights gained from your situation analysis. Set SMART objectives. Ensure that your objectives are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, SMART. For example, instead of setting a vague goal like improve stakeholder engagement, define a more precise objective such as increase healthcare professional engagement by 20% through targeted educational initiatives over the next 12 months. Prioritize objectives. Not all objectives will have equal importance. Prioritize your strategic objectives based on their potential impact feasibility, and alignment with your organizational goals. This prioritization will help focus your resources on the most critical areas, align with key stakeholders, 
engage with key stakeholders within your organization, such as commercial, market access, and R&D teams, to ensure that your objectives are aligned with broader company strategies. This alignment ensures consistency and avoids duplication of efforts. Defining clear strategic objectives sets the direction for your entire plan and serves as a roadmap for all subsequent activities. With your strategic objectives in place, the next step is to develop tactical plans that outline the specific activities required to achieve these objectives. Tactical planning involves breaking down your high-level goals into actionable steps, detailing what needs to be done, who will do it, and when it will be completed. Design key initiatives. Identify key initiatives that will drive your strategy forward. For example, if one of your objectives is to generate new real-world evidence, your tactical plan might include initiatives such as designing an observational study, collaborating with external research partners, and developing a publication plan. Allocate resources. Determine the resources needed for each initiative, including budget, personnel, and technology. Ensure that you have the necessary expertise and support to execute your plans effectively. This may involve collaborating with external vendors, hiring additional staff, or investing in new tools and platforms. Create timelines and milestones. Establish clear timelines for each initiative, including start and end dates, major milestones, and deadlines for deliverables. Timelines help keep your team on track and provide a mechanism for monitoring progress. Risk management. Identify potential risks to your tactical plans and develop mitigation strategies. For instance, if there is a risk of delayed study enrollment, have a contingency plan that includes alternative recruitment strategies or additional site engagement efforts. Tactical plans are the actionable blueprints of your strategic plan outlining the detailed steps needed to achieve your objectives. Executing the strategic and tactical plans is where strategy meets action. This step involves implementing the initiatives outlined in your tactical plans, managing resources, and coordinating efforts across the medical affairs team and other functions. Effective team coordination. Ensure that all team members understand their roles and responsibilities in executing the plan. Regular communication and coordination are essential to keep everyone aligned and motivated. Monitoring progress. Use project management tools to track the progress of each initiative. Monitor key performance indicators, KPIs, and ensure that timelines are being met. Regular check-ins, progress reports, and status meetings help identify potential bottlenecks early and keep the plan on track. Adjust as needed. Be prepared to adjust your tactics as you execute. Unexpected challenges, such as changes in the regulatory environment or new competitor data, may require you to pivot. An agile approach to execution allows you to respond quickly to changes without compromising the overall strategic direction. Execution is where the success of your strategic plan is truly tested making effective management and adaptation critical to achieving your objectives. The final step in the strategic planning process is evaluating the success of your plan and optimizing your strategy based on the outcomes. This step involves a thorough review of your objectives, tactics, and overall impact to determine what worked, what didn't, and what could be improved. Measure outcomes. Against objectives, Compare the actual outcomes of your initiatives against your initial strategic objectives. Use your predefined metrics to assess performance, looking at both qualitative and quantitative data. Did you achieve the desired impact on stakeholder engagement, evidence generation, or patient outcomes? Collect feedback. Gather feedback from internal stakeholders, external partners, and target audiences to understand the effectiveness of your initiatives. Feedback provides valuable insights into areas of success and opportunities for improvement. Identify learnings and best practices. Document key learnings from the planning and execution process. Identify best practices 
that can be replicated in future planning cycles and note any challenges that need to be addressed. This continuous learning approach helps refine your planning process and improves the effectiveness of future strategies. Adjust future plans. Use the insights gained from your evaluation to inform the next strategic planning cycle. Adjust your goals, refine your tactics, and implement changes that will enhance your medical affairs strategy going forward. Evaluation and optimization ensure that strategic planning is not a one-time event, but an ongoing cycle of learning and improvement, enabling medical affairs to continuously enhance their impact. The strategic planning process in medical affairs is a structured yet flexible approach that guides the development and execution of effective strategies. By following these steps, situation analysis, defining strategic objectives, developing tactical plans, executing the plan, and evaluating the outcomes, you can ensure that your medical affairs efforts are well aligned, impactful, and capable of adapting to the ever-changing healthcare landscape. Embracing this comprehensive approach to strategic planning will not only help you achieve your goals, but also position medical affairs as a strategic leader within your organization, driving scientific excellence and improving patient outcomes.